Friday, not last Friday, but the Friday before, I, was, I took a funeral service for a lady and we are trying to work out what her favourite hymn or song was. She was a Christian lady and we couldn't really work it out. So we went for the old standby that a lot of people know. There's a lot of non-Christian people at this funeral service, about 200. What a great song. That song we went for was Amazing Grace. What a great song. And of course it was written by John Newton who was a, well he was an ex-slaver. He used to deal in slavery, he's taking people and uh, he was an evil type of person. But somehow in God's goodness grace came upon his life and he changed around completely and he became an uh, Anglican minister. And he wrote these words, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. And you know, it doesn't matter who we are, God's grace is sufficient for any of us. And in a moment we're going to hear from Valen Shirley, but I want to think for a little about God's amazing grace. Because we can't earn it, we don't deserve it, It's a free and wonderful gift from God. So I want to think about us. We're starting a series called Following Jesus. Think about following Jesus in the wonder of his grace. Luke 4.22, which is the next verse after our reading that we read from Luke chapter 4 last week, which was about Jesus quoting from Isaiah 61. Luke 4.22 says this, All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Isn't this Joseph's son? Because Jesus had been invited to read the scriptures and to to speak in his hometown of Nazareth, and so there he was, reading the scriptures and speaking. And the people knew of of Joseph, Joseph the carpenter, and they expected his son, Jesus, well, to be a chip off the old block, so to speak. Not this person who spoke so well and caused absolute amazement. Now, no doubt Jesus did speak well, but is this just about Jesus being gracious and pleasant and saying nice things. Actually, in our reading it says gracious words, but really that is words of grace. And it seems likely from what happened next that Jesus was saying that God's grace was for everyone, for you and for me. God's grace was for everyone, not just for the Jews, the people of Israel. God's grace was for the pagans, the Gentiles, and even the hated Roman oppressors. And that wasn't what the Jewish people in Nazareth wanted to hear. They expected grace for Israel and judgment for everyone else. They wanted Jesus to come back to his hometown and do some healings and exorcisms and a few magic tricks. That's what they were hoping for. But Jesus knows what they want. He says bluntly to them, a prophet isn't welcome in his hometown. Now, I've been in this church just for a little while, and it's a very welcoming church. Praise the Lord. That's good. But Jesus says, a prophet isn't welcome in his hometown. And then he further infuriates them by telling them that Elijah, the great prophet in the Old Testament, well, he didn't help the Jewish widows, but he helped this foreign widow from Zarephath. And then Elisha, another great Old Testament prophet, he didn't help the lepers in Israel, says Jesus. He helped Naaman, the foreign army commander from Syria. So that really infuriated the people, and they got so angry, they dragged Jesus out, and they were going to throw him off a cliff. But he just walked out through their midst. Now, many people can't understand or believe God's grace. Others, well, they only want it on their own terms. At the beginning of John's Gospel, and this is one of my favourite verses, it states that Jesus came into this world full of grace and truth. Now grace 
is, if you like, mercy and love wrapped up in a package and given to us that we don't merit it at all. And I was talking earlier, there's a grace here. <laughs> a lot of people get called named grace. It's a wonderful thing, this grace of God's. Because it's God's doing from beginning to end. Because we are saved by grace through faith. It's all of God's. His grace through and through and through the grace of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And again and again, Paul acknowledges the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of his letters end by saying grace to you. Or something like, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Because this grace is for everyone. This grace is for you. This grace is for Shirley and Val. This grace is for me. Now, though you may be the vilest evil person, a sinner like John Newton, a slave trader, this grace can take hold of you and transform you, and it is God's doing. And when we follow Jesus, it's to acknowledge and know that he has done it all, that his grace is sufficient and that now we live in the wonder of his grace. I'll just tell you a little story. There was, people know about Rolls-Royce cars, a story about a man goes to buy a Rolls-Royce and, in England and the company there says, no, this car will never break down. He says, okay, that's really good. So he buys it. He must have been pretty rich because they're pretty expensive. He buys this Rolls-Royce and he's driving around and all of a sudden the car breaks down. His Rolls-Royce breaks down. So he rings up and says, hey, my, my Rolls Royce has broken down. Next minute, a helicopter arrives, a mechanic. mechanic goes to his car, fixes it up, and off he goes. Well, that's good, seems the man. They did promise it would never break down. He's waiting and waiting. A few weeks go past, he's expecting this big hefty bill. Nothing comes. So he rings up Rolls Royce, hey, what's happened to my bill for fixing up my car, which broke down? I'm sorry, sir, our cars don't break down and we have no record of anyone going to fix your car. No record. And that's like us. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are completely forgiven. Our slate has been wiped clean. There's no record of our wrongs before God because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus in the wonder of his grace.